I boarded the 375 bus like any other day, looking for a seat towards the back. As I settled in, I noticed an unsettling feeling in my stomach. I couldn't quite place my finger on it, but something just didn't feel right. As we made our way down the road, I started to feel increasingly uneasy. The other passengers on the bus seemed to be on edge as well. They kept looking around, checking their phones, and glancing nervously out the window. That's when I heard it. A low, guttural growling sound that seemed to be coming from somewhere outside the bus. I looked out the window, trying to locate the source of the noise. What I saw made my blood run cold. A group of people, or what used to be people, were staggering down the street towards us. Their skin was gray and mottled, their eyes sunken and lifeless. They were covered in blood and seemed to be moving in a mindless, animalistic way. Panic set in as the passengers on the bus started screaming and scrambling for the exits. I couldn't move. I was frozen in fear, watching as the undead horde closed in on us. The bus driver, bless his soul, didn't hesitate. He slammed his foot down on the gas and the bus lurched forward, sending the zombies tumbling to the ground. We made it to safety, but I'll never forget the horror I witnessed on the 375 bus. It's a reminder that sometimes the scariest things in life are the ones you never see coming. The bus driver didn't stop driving until we had reached the outskirts of the city. We were all panting, trying to catch our breath and calm our nerves. But the worst was yet to come. As we rounded a bend in the road, we saw that the highway was blocked by abandoned cars, their doors hanging open and their windows smashed. We could hear the moaning and growling of the undead all around us, but we couldn't see them. Suddenly, the bus jerked to a stop. The driver had seen something in the road ahead, something that made him hit the brakes so hard that several passengers were thrown forward in their seats. We all looked out the front windshield, trying to see what was causing the delay. And that's when we saw them, a group of zombies, banging on the windows of the bus and trying to force their way inside. The driver was shouting, telling us to stay calm and keep the doors locked. But we all knew that we were trapped. The zombies were getting more aggressive by the second, pounding on the glass with their fists and bared teeth. Suddenly, a hand burst through the window next to me. It was gnarled and rotting, the flesh hanging off in strips. I recoiled in horror, but there was nowhere to go. The other passengers were screaming now trying to push the zombie's hand back out of the window. But it was too strong. It was pulling itself through the broken glass, its other hand clawing at the air as it tried to grab onto something solid. I knew I had to do something, anything, to stop the zombie from getting inside. With a surge of adrenaline, I grabbed the nearest object I could find a broken piece of metal and swung it at the zombie's head. It connected with a sickening crunch, and the zombie's grip on the window loosened. It fell back, twitching and moaning, but it wasn't dead. We finally managed to force the zombie out of the bus and lock the doors. But we knew that there were more out there, waiting for us. As we sat in terrified silence, waiting for the next attack, I couldn't help but wonder if we would make it out alive. Just as we thought things couldn't get any worse, the bus suddenly lurched forward and we found ourselves careening down the road once again. But this time, something was different. As we drove past abandoned buildings and broken down cars, we heard a strange sound coming from up ahead. It was a thumping bass line, accompanied by a series of eerie, otherworldly melodies. We turned a corner, and that's when we saw it, a group of zombies, dancing wildly in the street. They were covered in blood and grime, their clothes torn and ragged. But instead of attacking us, they were having a full-blown dance party. At first, we were all stunned into silence. We had never seen anything like this before. But then, slowly but surely, the rhythm began to take hold of us. One by one, the passengers on the bus started to sway and move to the beat. Even the bus driver couldn't resist the infectious energy of the zombie dance party. 
As we drove past the party, we could see the zombies grinning and nodding along with the music. They were almost happy. For a moment, we forgot about the horror that we had just experienced. We forgot about the fear and the chaos. We were caught up in the joy of the moment, dancing and grooving with a group of undead strangers. But as quickly as it had begun, the dance party came to an end. The bus continued down the road, leaving the zombies behind us. But we all knew that we would never forget the surreal, bizarre experience of the zombie dance party. It was a reminder that even in the midst of horror and darkness, there can be moments of unexpected beauty and joy. As we drove away from the zombie dance party, something felt off. It was like the air had grown thicker, and the feeling of dread had returned with a vengeance. The bus driver's face had changed. It had become pale and sickly, with dark circles under his eyes. He was breathing heavily, and his hands were shaking on the wheel. Suddenly, the driver turned to us with a snarl. His eyes were red and glazed over, and his teeth were bared in a grotesque grimace. We all realized at once what was happening. The driver had been bitten by a zombie, and he had turned without us noticing. Panic erupted on the bus as we scrambled for the doors. But it was too late. The driver had locked them from the inside, trapping us all in the confined space with a raging zombie. The bus careened down the road, swerving dangerously as the driver lurched and snarled at us. We were helpless, trapped in our seats as the driver slammed into other vehicles and drove recklessly through the streets. It was like a nightmare come to life. The driver was relentless, his movements becoming more erratic and violent with each passing moment. Just as we thought all hope was lost, we heard a piercing siren in the distance. It was the sound of the police, coming to our rescue. The driver growled in frustration as the police cars pulled up alongside the bus, their lights flashing in the darkness. But they were too late. The driver had already crashed the bus into a wall, sending us all flying forward. In the chaos that followed, we managed to escape the bus and flee into the night. But the horror of what we had witnessed stayed with us, haunting our dreams and reminding us that in a world overrun by zombies, there are no safe places and no one to trust. As we stumbled out of the crashed bus and onto the street, we realized that the police had arrived too late. The zombie driver had escaped into the night, leaving us stranded in an unknown part of the city. We were disoriented and terrified, surrounded by abandoned buildings and empty streets. The silence was broken only by the distant sound of shuffling feet and low, guttural moans. We knew we had to find shelter, and fast. But as we walked deeper into the darkness, the feeling of being watched only grew stronger. Suddenly, we heard a rustling sound coming from an alleyway up ahead. It was like something was moving in the shadows, just out of sight. We cautiously approached, our hearts pounding with fear. And that's when we saw it, a horde of zombies, shuffling towards us with blank, lifeless eyes. We ran, our feet pounding on the pavement as we fled for our lives. But it was like they were everywhere, closing in on us from all sides. One by one, we were caught by the zombies, our screams echoing through the empty streets. It was like a nightmare, with no escape and no hope of survival. But just as we thought all was lost, we heard a voice calling out to us from a nearby rooftop. It was a lone survivor, armed with a makeshift weapon and a fierce determination to survive. Together, we fought off the zombies, our hearts racing with adrenaline as we battled for our lives. We were outnumbered and outmatched, but we refused to give up. As the last of the zombies fell to the ground, we collapsed in exhaustion and relief. We had survived, but at what cost? The horror of that night would stay with us forever, a reminder that in a world overrun by the undead, every moment could be our last. But we were survivors, and we would continue to fight, no matter what horrors lay ahead. As we continued to make our way through the desolate and eerie streets, we could feel the weight of our terror bearing down on us. 
The knowledge that we were truly alone in this nightmare world, with no one to turn to and no safe haven to retreat to, left us feeling like we were being swallowed whole by the darkness. Suddenly, we heard the sound of footsteps echoing down the street. We froze in place, too frightened to move as we watched a pack of zombies approach us from the shadows. As they got closer, we could see the rotting flesh peeling from their bones, their eyes sunken deep into their skulls. The stench of decay was overpowering, and we could barely contain our gagging as they surrounded us. We tried to fight them off with all the strength we could muster, but it was like fighting a losing battle. No matter how many we took down, more just kept coming. The sound of their gnashing teeth and guttural growls echoed through our minds like a symphony of horror. We were trapped, with no way out. Just when we thought all hope was lost, we heard the sound of a car engine in the distance. We couldn't believe it, could it be a rescue party, coming to save us? But as the car got closer, we could see that it was no ordinary vehicle. It was a hearse, with a driver whose face was shrouded in darkness. As it pulled up beside us, the driver got out and approached us with a sinister smile. Need a ride, he asked, his voice low and menacing. We hesitated, unsure of what to do. But as the zombies closed in, we realized we had no other choice. We climbed into the hearse, our hearts pounding with fear as we tried to make sense of what was happening. But it was too late. The driver had locked the doors from the outside, trapping us inside with him. As he drove us through the city, we could feel the weight of our terror pressing down on us like a ton of bricks. We didn't know where he was taking us, but we knew it couldn't be good. And as the hearse pulled up to an old, abandoned mansion on the outskirts of town, we realized that our worst fears had been realized. We were about to become the playthings of a madman, with no way out and no hope of survival. As I woke up from my nightmare, I was drenched in sweat and my heart was pounding in my chest. I breathed a sigh of relief as I realized that it had all just been a dream. I got out of bed and went about my usual routine, trying to shake off the lingering fear and anxiety from my nightmare. As I left my apartment and made my way to the bus stop, I couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. As I boarded the 375 bus, I tried to push my nightmare out of my mind and focus on my day ahead. But as the bus started to move, I noticed something strange about the driver. He seemed familiar, somehow. And then it hit me, he was the same driver from my nightmare. I tried to shake off the feeling of dread that washed over me, telling myself that it was just a coincidence. But as we drove deeper into the city, I started to notice other similarities to my nightmare. The abandoned buildings, the empty streets, the feeling of being watched. I tried to convince myself that it was all just my imagination, but as we approached the same alleyway where I had encountered the zombies in my dream, I knew that it was all too real. As the bus came to a sudden stop, I looked out the window and saw a horde of zombies surrounding us. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. And then, just as suddenly as it had started, it was over. I woke up again, this time for real, in my bed at home. I breathed a sigh of relief and tried to laugh it off, telling myself that it had all just been a silly dream. But as I got ready for work and headed out to the bus stop once again, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. As I boarded the 375 bus once again, I couldn't help but wonder, was it really just a dream? Or was it a premonition of things to come? Only time would tell.